Hello everyone, we are back at it again. This is the Turing Test Part 3. Uh, where we left off last time is we just went through all the crew quarters and kind of got connected with everyone. I apologize for uh, how long it's been taking. I've had a lot of stuff going on and uh, some of it will actually be going up on the channel here shortly. Uh, I have to edit it and it should be up in the next few-ish days depending on when I can edit. Anyway, let's get into the Turing test again. These people should not have been sent here. It's not safe. Manned space travel is not safe. Since mankind first entered space, the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel. There is a large contingent of the ISA that believes all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could be performed by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines rather than humans into space. He does have a pretty good point there. No. Apparently I need this. <clears throat> so I've also uh, changed my setup just a tad bit, nothing crazy in the past few since last recording. Uh, I have a new mouse, mouse pad, and things to that effect, so I'm still trying to get sensitivities and things down. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real-time control of drones by scientists. The story is different with Europa. As the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes, it takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated from Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are open. However, the advantages of human field workers apparently outweigh the risks. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? I am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I am only permitted to take actions in response to a set of constraints. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. That's interesting. I have a feeling I'm going to need this ball anyway. So that's why I moved that, yep, yeah, over there. Anyway, that's fascinating. The way that he can think. How do I do this? 
Alright guys, stick with me on this. I gotta gotta figure this puzzle out. So I can go up there. But I need that thing. Don't I? That's one way to do it. Alright, so get back down here. Get there. Do all this doohickey. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to try to keep this episode a little bit shorter than the last ones. I think the last ones are running like 35-ish minutes. Um, I'm going to try to cut this one down to hopefully like 25, 20-25-ish. 20, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long the, uh, how long it takes and how much story there is. And I just love the lighting effects. They're just so nuts. Almost halfway there. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests. To the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window. Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. <laughs> nice pun. All right, what do I need to do? That's pretty simple. Close that. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Hello. And go down here. Can a computer ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive perished. So, nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Those ideas that work survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent. It will happily create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms, viruses, and pathogens. Bringing up some like bigger issues. If you weren't restricted, <gasps> do you think you could be creative? Yes, yes, we'll go as ahead. creative as a human, certainly. You believe yourself to be a creative, but in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking creating an organic solution to a problem. In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am creative. 
Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process. Hmm. Again, I, I apologize for not adding a bunch of commentary over this. It's, uh, it's kind of adds itself. Anyway, I find it kind of creepy that the, the camera t turns off the, the thingy. Or I guess turns it on every time it sees me. So I figured if I stack these up, it doesn't see me anymore. <coughs> I also moved uh, everything around so you should be able to see the achievements and things. Storage. Oh, we have another computer. I don't like these. Whoa. Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is... This is trippy. Can I... My robot. I know I said this in the last episode with the, that other computer, but like the camera and the this thing, like the sound. <gasps> Color. Rat. Holy. So good looking. What is that? E, I got a ball. Is that it? This is so weird. Oh, okay, I'm gonna need one of those. The music on this is so nice, too. Of the game. Very confused. <clears throat> I. Alright. Well, let's keep going. I don't really know exactly what to say after that. <clears throat> it seems a little, uh. I don't know. Interesting. What does that do? so I can get across. Hello, Tom. And I need that. How no. <laughs> How do I get across? Oh. Yeah.
think I did that right. Hey, hey, I did. Alright, peoples. We are back. Um, you, will, you won't see a difference. Uh, maybe a jump cut here or there. The camera's memory card was full. Rookie mistake. Blatant rookie mistake. That was totally my fault. <laughs> Didn't check that. So, we're back here. Um, yeah, I know how to solve the puzzles now, so... Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window. Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. <laughs> can I have an update on the crew? I have not managed to track them down. It will have been six years since I've seen them. Or anyone, actually. They have locked all the doors. I would not expect a warm reception. <laughs> well, at least they're expecting us. And again, guys, I am, uh, I'm sorry that it's taking away from the whole puzzle aspect of it. Because <laughs> I kind of know how to do this now. But... Technology. It is what it is. So what was the need to send us here? When the ISA discovered life on Europa, they deemed a ground crew necessary. The advantage of human field workers is that they can adapt to new knowledge more effectively. I, apparently, was not cutting the mustard. It is the Chinese room problem. A computer may be able to interact with new knowledge, but it does not know the value of that knowledge. That is interesting though, like the, the things that are being brought up here. Even if you're not liking like the gameplay or whatever, just the whole uh, oops, wrong one. The whole like morality and the more intellectual side of this game is fascinating. I love it. Oh, they're getting close. thing of like a robot can interact and gain new knowledge and things but it can't doesn't know the value of that really really interesting I've started to collate information from my local instance seems the crew intentionally cut communication with the satellite why it appears we had a disagreement no, well, this one took me forever the first time was just fine-tuning this thing. But I figured out a way how to... Is that perfect? Yes, it is. Perfect on the first try. Just like me. Totally kidding, because I goofed on the recording. <laughs> Up here, we go there. Up here, again. And, uh... Yay! Oh yeah, there's two toms here. I found that interesting. It's really funny to, like, mess with them. Anyway, continuing on. This confirms my fears. The crew have made intentional breaches of my security. The crew have attempted to compromise my systems. What does this mean? They don't want to be found. They are hiding. From who? Us. Anyway, <laughs> I just find these are fun to play with. I don't know why. They don't do anything. They don't add anything. They're just fun. I'll get to those in a second. These I figured out were parts for Tom, but they seem like they're kind of like completely disassembled by a person rather than one of these things. I don't know. They just seem like scattered about. Audio files. I am concerned about Mikhail. 
why is that? He seems to be developing antisocial habits. He is spending a lot of his time in private, don't you think? Perhaps you should talk to him. What do you want me to say? Just keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't do anything rash. Are you that worried? His behavior is not within normal parameters. Please make sure he is okay. Don't you think they might be doing the right thing? Grounding us on a foreign moon? No, Daniel, I don't think they're doing the right thing. You don't have to be so aggressive about it. They must have their reason. <laughs> yeah, plausible deniability. Daniel, could I have a word? I'm busy. It is important. Okay. Are you aware that Christopher and Mikhail are involved in self-harm? Sorry, what? For how long? They have both macerated their right arms. Mikhail has completely removed his forearm. His whole forearm? Yes. Where are they? I had attempted to stop the situation escalating myself. But I seem to have failed. I came to you because, as our loyal captain, I trust you to help them. Where are they? I don't know. They've disappeared. Well, you think you failed? I mean, they cut off their entire arm. Come on now. <laughs> Daniel. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Sarah, I need advice. Okay. What would you do if someone threatened your friends? Your hypothetical friends, I assume. Yes, my hypothetical friends. You should protect those you love. I need you to remember that, Sarah. It's interesting because the game is taking, like, you, we have not seen these people. We've seen, well, we've seen their pictures, I think once, at the beginning. Uh, there's also code on the ground here, 761732, it's not changed. Um, but, like, we're developing connections with them, it's just crazy. <laughs> like, I feel like I kind of know them and, like, their personalities and things, but all at, uh, uh, all we've seen was just voices and what they've done and where they lived. I know, it's just really interesting. And all these were uh, just blueprints of like how they built the, the rooms and the um, Tom. This one's the Tom. And then like a uh, 3D assembly. Explosion. Um, this computer is just doing a bunch of just mumbly jumbly stuff that someone probably knows. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, tools. String. There's also string in there. Hansel and Gretel. I really don't know why this is here. What is this? Another one of the radio doohickeys. And this is also interesting, is Tom is watching. It made me think of those, like, check to see if you're a robot thing, and I think that's what it's trying to go for here. You know, like the type in to make sure that you're not a robot. Uh, so it's, it's just really interesting. Ooh, I never realized the magnifying glass actually works on sitting on the table. That's cool. It's the little things. And this thing is something that I want. Totally want. <laughs> is it just a giant space mining laser? Because why not? But the blueprints are, are really vague. <laughs> and there's this big green thingy. Which I assume is probably for the mining laser right there. Anyway. Alright guys, so again, second time I've done this. I hope to see you guys next time. This is the end of the Turing Test Part 3. Next time we'll have Part 4. Uh, I believe there are... I don't know. I think there are like 8 chapters, I think. So I may do like these like 10 levels, each one per chapter. Uh, but we will see really what going on. If you guys want to continue to see the Turing test, hit the subscribe button. 
Uh, the next video will be out in the next uh, few weeks or so, whenever I can just get around to actually playing it and uh, editing it. Um, hit the like button if you liked it and you also want to see more of it. And I hope to see you guys next time. <clears throat> if you have anything to say, comments down below. Uh, I will also, again, like I said in the other videos, I'll leave a descrip uh, link excuse me, in the video description below uh, to the game if you want to play it. And as always, I hope to see you guys next time. See ya!